you're a parent at home and you have a baby or a toddler and they just don't want to get rid of that pacifier or that bottle, we hear you. Nanny Rabina is here to help you out. <laughs> Melissa and Holden here. Holden's four years old, and we've got Janie here with uh, Evan, who's 20 months. So we're going to start with Melissa and Holden. Uh, Holden's four years old. Almost. Almost four. What, have you tried to take the pacifier away from him before? Many times. What happens? Um, a bit of a meltdown. Yeah. And then I give in. <laughs> right. <laughs> How many times do you think you've tried? Uh, a few. A few. <laughs> Definitely okay. a few. And Brown, what time of day are you usually trying to take it away? He's good about it during the day, especially when he goes to preschool. But as soon as nighttime comes, then he has to have it back. Or if he gets really overtired, then yes. he needs it. And then I give in. Cool mic, huh? Mm -hmm. So you can't answer me because there's a pacifier in your mouth. <laughs> You're so adorable. OK, Rabina, what should someone like Melissa be doing? Well, I think she should come to my house. I'll handcuff her, send him home with daddy. Problem solved. Oh, that sounds so, that sounds so easy. <laughs> OK, seriously? You know what, when you take a pacifier away from a baby that's much younger, like nine months, 10 months, it actually is easier because yeah. it's been shorter term, right? When you have an older child like Holden, which is not that unusual, you know, two and a half, three, four years old, they still have the soother. They're very, very attached to it. Mm -hmm. So I think the first thing that you want to think about is having Holden attached to something else. So that's not always easy. It takes a little, you know, it takes a little work, get a blanket or a favorite teddy, Literally keep feeding it him. It's like keep having it, having it, having it, until he really attaches to it because you're going to take something away that he's very attached to. So with that, you want to replace that. So okay. you want to get him attached to something and then take it away. But you do, probably don't want to get him attached to something else that he can suck on, right? Because no, for no. a lot of kids, it's that sucking Suck motion it. It that they really motion. love. And I think what you can do is you start in small steps because he is used to it. So let's cut it out in the morning. You know, mm. you're not allowed to have it in the morning anymore. And then you cut it out in the afternoon. Mm. And then, I, I, I mentioned it to Melissa before, well, while he's sleeping, start slipping it out of his mouth just before he totally falls to sleep so he doesn't come as dependent on it. So you sort of do it in small stages. You're taking her away longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. There is going to be that problem, you know, whining, fussing, kicking up a storm. You know what? You want to have a box of things on hand. So it could be toys that you've taken away and hid that are his favourite. You can bring out for those moments. Okay. Choose a long weekend, you know, where they're going to be super busy. So you take it away. You really exhausted he'll sleep easier without it because he's exhausted okay you know? so if he does go into you can take whatever you want in the box I and that's fine that and you have that oh this is actually pretty cool too ah, watch what this has. whoa it's working <laughs> yeah he's like what pacifier that gets hidden behind the city line cars <laughs> Rubina, if if so if she takes it away and he goes through for meltdown mode which any parent can understand it's brutal and you're tired and you want to go to sleep What's she, what's she supposed to do? Phone me. Don't okay. talk to me. I'll so talk. not not give the no, pacifier sorry. back? You know what? It would be all too easy. So let me tell you, you need to go on a house hunt. Do you know how many children have 200 hidden around the house? Yeah. So you take this one away, then he comes back three hours later with another one in his mouth that was <laughs> hidden under the crib, around the back of the sofa. So have a good search. But it all comes down to really mommy having the strength not to give in. Because if you keep giving in, you're not making any progress. Yeah. You've got to... You know, you got to get the tough love hat on mm -hmm. and, and see it through. So let yeah. the meltdown go on for as long no, as it needs what? to go yeah, on and get rid of that pacifier. Him. You've just got to keep him busy and get yeah. him involved in something else, distraction. Okay. You know? Distraction's a good one. Yeah. It works on grown-ups, too. It really does. Okay, let's move over to uh, Janie and Evan. Evan's just 20 months. So is it time to get him off the bottle already at yeah. 20 months? Yeah. I don't know. Mine was oh on my for God. Until we, We're getting the baby off the bottle at six months these days. Really? <laughs> well, a lot. You know what? You can actually actually skip the bottle process altogether yeah, because this is one of them. This is actually a bottle up to four months, but guess what? This, you see, it started off with a soother, mm -hmm. so you've got this one here, right? But then it actually converts into a sippy cup. Well, mm -hmm. when you look at that, as long as you have something inside for a slow motion, there's actually no reason why these days you even go to the bottle. Yeah. Other than it's a mommy special moment, right? So it's about us. It's, it's not about it, them. You know, you want to have that special moment. But you can, you know, you can skip the bottle and sort of go straight on to sippy cups these days. Right. Because of what's out there on the market. Janie, have you tried to take the bottle away? I have. I introduced the water in a sippy cup very 
very early on at six months, yeah. but I didn't do it for his milk. <laughs> and now uh, oh. I try and give him his milk in this Mickey because he loves his Mickey. Mm -hmm. um, he'll take it during the day once in a while, mm -hmm. but at nighttime, and, and in the mornings, too, around 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. um, he needs to have his bottle. And it's a full-on meltdown every single day. And right. I try it every day. And, yeah, and you yeah. know what? It's, it's by no means going to be easy. It is something that they absolutely love. But one of the things I have found personally from experience is when you actually allow a child to actually help be part of the process of putting the milk in, hey, Evan, why don't we pull this milk in? Mommy's going to help That's you so Mommy right. doesn't get it all down her... Very high shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's one fashionable so mama. Very nice. So let's pull the milk in. And what I found in the past, Tracy, is the child yes. actually being a good part of this process mm -hmm. of pouring the milk in, suddenly the milk tastes so much better. Right. The other thing is, is if I'd already spoken to mom here that Evan was a breastfed baby, you will find that breastfed babies often prefer to suck through straws. Mm -hmm. You know, so all these cups here with the straws and that there from Bye Bye Baby and you know what, you can get the, the bottle, whoops, the bottle conversion, and you can get these little pop-up straws or just the toe. So you've got to find the one that suits your baby. Okay, yeah. I like it, but it really it's about it, staying strong. It's about staying strong. And being okay through the meltdown. Yeah. So doing it on a weekend when you might have some time to be able to stay at home and just handle the mel meltdown because... Well, I'd leave him with Dad and go get my nails done myself, <laughs> but that's me. Such good advice, Rubina, I like that. Let's